Welcome to Trinity United Church. We are located in the west end of Edmonton, Alberta, and we are found in the traditional territory and the home of peoples of the First Nations who signed Treaty 6. This includes Cree, Ojibwe, and Assiniboine people. This is also part of the Métis Nation. Trinity is an affirming congregation, striving always toward inclusion and participation by all, honoring and appreciating the diversity of sexual orientation and gender identity. Welcome to Trinity United Church for Sunday, December 5th, 2021. This is the second Sunday in the season of Advent. In the season of Advent, we light our Advent candles. Today we light the second of our Advent candles and we call it the candle of peace. It reminds us that generation after generation has dreamed of a world in which the weapons of destruction are transformed into instruments of nurture. Come, let us walk in peace in the light of God. Holy One, may your peace surround me. May your peace work through me. May your peace extend to the world. Amen. Peace is something that we call forth every time we gather or we reach out to in worship. We pass the peace to one another in our gathering times when we are together in this sanctuary, although we don't literally reach out and touch anyone to pass the peace, but indeed symbolic actions mean a lot. And we bless one another, praying for peace to be with our friends as we depart. In this Advent season, as we anticipate the coming of Christ, we use the title for Christ of the Prince of Peace. Yearning for peace is important to us. But what are we praying for when we pray for peace? Well, we can look at peace in different ways. We can think about that personal sense of peace, that, that inner calm, you might say. And what goes into that sort of inner peace? Does it come from a sense of connection with the world, with God, with our neighbors? Does it, does it arise from a feeling of contentment? Certainly in some religions and spiritual practices and communities, this is indeed an expressed goal of life, achieving a personal sense of peace or something else it may be named. One writer, Karen Armstrong, says that peace is about wholeness. It's about coming home to oneself, to the universe, to the richness of the holy. Many times when we speak of peace, we look to our communities and our wider world, and indeed there is plenty of violence and conflict. There is injustice and oppression and unfair treatment which can then spark violence itself or other unrest. Mistrust and suspicion cause people to be fearful of others. These are the sorts of situations that make us look for peace, yearn for peace, and indeed pray for peace. Alan Bosak was a, an anti-apartheid campaigner in South Africa in the days of apartheid. And he spoke of peace as the pursuit 
of active justice. So indeed, there are inward expressions of peace and there are outward pursuits of peace. When we think and pray about peace, it isn't just one or the other. Mohandas Gandhi said, if you love peace, hate injustice, hate tyranny, hate greed, but hate these inside of yourself, not in another. That, I think, pulls together the outer and the inner pursuit of peace. They are not different. They are, indeed, all connected. Thanks be to God. Amen. Today we have two scripture readings. The first is from the prophet Malachi in chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap, he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver and they, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in the former years. And the second reading is taken from the Gospel according to Luke in chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. In the 15th year of the, emperor, of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler in Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler in the region of Ituria and Trachonitus, and Lysanias was ruler of Abilene. During the priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill made low, and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh will see the salvation of God. This is part of our sacred story Thanks be to God. Politics and geography. Sounds a bit like the listing of courses for high school or maybe for an undergraduate degree. Politics and geography. These are two things that have great influence on our lives. They can determine how we might thrive and prosper, or how we can be constrained and limited. Politics, of course, is about who is in control and what kind of power they hold. What are the bounds of power and what is the sphere of influence? There are empires and kingdoms, there are provinces and regions and cities, and each of these hold power in different ways and for different things. With politics, we see whose agenda gets the attention, who can get things done, whether for good or ill, who sets the taxes, and who sends the armies off to war. Politics is about people in power. Geography is all about the natural world and how we live in it. Landforms and waterways will influence the resources that we can access. 
how we will travel, and how we will distribute those resources. Landforms can be easy to cross, or they can be indeed a barrier. Some people are well off because of the geography that surrounds them. Some people are impoverished and face immense struggle because of the geography in which they live. Now, you might be tempted to think perhaps that Luke, the gospel writer, has a special interest in politics and indeed in geography as well. The gospel reading for today from the gospel according to Luke is bracketed by words about politics and words about geography. Luke introduces for us the person of John the Baptist in today's reading. And we hear about the world into which John is placed. There are words about politics. And then later there will be words about geography. First of all, we hear that in the 15th year of the emperor, there were these this area governor, and there were these district rulers of three different regions, and because politics influences and infiltrates other areas of life, the high priests of the temple are also mentioned. The people in power, when John came on the scene, they sat on thrones and in the halls of governors and on the seats of power in the places of influence. John, on the other hand, was in the wilderness. Note the contrast. This lesson and the message that we hear are full of contrasts. John was not concerned with power like they were. For he did not call his followers to fight so that he could gain power. The powerful forces were as nothing to John. Instead, John's message was of repentance, renouncing power. Our lives are not to be ruled by those who have power. Now there's a thought to consider. They may well exercise power over us, but real power, real strength comes in forgiveness. Real strength comes from turning in a different way from those in power. Then we hear John speak of geography, where geography can be a barrier for us, John brings us a message that will save us from those barriers. Mountains that cannot be crossed will be brought low. Valleys that are steep and dangerous will rise. Crooked paths on which we could get lost will straighten and clear. Again, more messages of contrast. And this is not the only time in the season that we hear about contrasts and indeed reversals. It will be coming up in the next couple of weeks when we will hear from Mary, mother of Jesus, Mary. When she learned of her pregnancy, she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who herself was pregnant with John, John whom we meet in the reading today. And when these two women meet, when, that, when they met together, Mary sang a song of reversals and contrasts. She sang about how people who are high and mighty, people who have power, will be humbled. People who are lowly and practically invisible to everyone else, well, those ones will be their human their humanity, their human value will shine. Those who have plenty will have it removed, and those who have nothing will have an abundance. Contrasts and reversals. Mountains 
coming down, valleys coming up, contrasts and reversals. Luke introduces us to the message of John by talking about politics and geography. These are powerful forces that have their hold on us. These are forces that determine the quality of human life. He tells of contrasts to those seemingly immutable forces. And that's a message of hope. It's a message of longing and anticipation. It's a message of seeing the world differently. There may have been seven powerful people in prominent political and influential positions named as John is introduced. But it is John who is the bearer of God's word. It is John in the wilderness. Mountains and valleys may seem eternal, but they will be leveled so that a straight and easy path can be followed. It is a message of hope. It's not something that we can see, but it's something that we know. When people in power do something that we hear about and we groan, so often that happens with people in power, we know that there is a different message. And when political analysts make predictions and economists make forecasts, we know that there will be a different message. When laws are unjust, and lawmakers seem firm in their injustice, we remember the message of John, and we know that injustice cannot endure. It may not be soon. It may not be in the next set of elections that come around. But we know that mountains of injustice will not endure. And when we see deep valleys of disregard of those on the margins, we know that will not endure. When racism is not challenged with real change, when missing and murdered Indigenous women are forgotten, we know that valley will be filled. What other valleys of disregard lay before us? Indigenous rights and reconciliation, the opioid crisis, the rights of gender and sexual diverse people, mental health issues, ability and disability issues. There are many values of disregard, valleys rather. There are many valleys of disregard that will be filled. We will do our part. We will do our part, but it sometimes feels like or seems like just a small bucket of sand in a valley as large as the Badlands. But we know, God, we know John's message. We know that the valleys of disregard will be filled. All that is hidden will be seen. All that is unjust will be made right. We will hear more from John. His message is for all and is for all time, a message of hope. We may not see it today, we may not see it tomorrow, but it will come. Keep watch, pay attention. There will be glimpses of reversal and contrasts. The one for whom we hope is coming. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer across the many ways that we worship, the many ways that we gather, and the ways that we are connected. Let us pray. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. O God, we pray that in our hearts your way may be prepared, that the path among us by your spirit, 
by which your spirit comes may be made straight. Prepare among us the path of peace. Grant the peace that comes in following your ways in opening our lives to you and sharing our gifts for your sake. Prepare among us the path of love. We pray for all who need to be embraced by love, all who are cramped and narrowed in spirit, all who have lost the ability to trust all that ache for a signal that they are cherished or even noticed by someone, all who struggle with a lifetime of burden of being told that they are not good enough. Prepare among us, O God, the path of hope. We pray for those in need of hope today, all who mourn the death of a loved one, who grieve the end of a relationship, who are worried for a friend, all who are anxious for a family member's health, people who are overwhelmed by illness or disability, who live in the midst of social collapse, warfare, or grinding poverty. Prepare among us the path of joy. We pray for those whose spirits need to be buoyed up and who have forgotten childhood's gift of taking delight in the simple things of life which come from you, O oh generous God. Hear our thanks and praise as our spirits turn to you and as we remember in a moment of silence the many blessings that we enjoy. O God of hope, peace, joy, and love, we honor you now and always through Jesus, your anointed one, and in the expectant power of your Holy Spirit. These and all our prayers we make in the spirit of Jesus, and we end saying his prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you for your continuing support of the mission and the ministry of Trinity United Church and of the United Church of Canada. You support them through your gifts and your offerings to this congregation and to mission and service. Your gifts make a big difference, we pray. Accept, O oh God, the gifts offered, the money given, the goodwill of our hearts, so that disappointments may be turned into hope and worry turned into anticipation as we wait with wonder the birth of Christ, Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us in this online presence of Trinity United Church. Hear these words as we go into the coming week. Return now to our world with its pain and its wonder. Remembering the words of the prophets, the faithfulness of Mary, the longing of all who yearn for a sign of hope, and may, may the, and may the blessing of God, who is ever faithful, the blessing of Christ, who still comes to us, and the blessing of the Holy Spirit, who moves within us and throughout our world, rest upon us and abide with us, this day and forevermore. Peace be with you, now and always. Amen.